It should be celebrated every day. Yeah. All of us, all of us will not be here without them or apart from them. So we owe them a lot. In fact, the Bible, the Bible speaks volume about moms, you know, beginning from uh, Sarah, the, the wife of Abraham, uh, Jochebed, the mother of uh, Moses, Hannah, the mother of uh, Samuel, and then Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, and so many more to, to share. When I was preparing, I think it would take me about two, three hours just to share just the image, the biblical image of um, a mother, a godly mother. But I will not do that. And this day, May 14, it happens to we we celebrate three uh, very important uh, events in the history of the world. Okay, but, uh, uh, first uh, today is the Mother's Day, but uh, we also celebrate the Day of Pentecost. Uh, 50 days after the Passover, the Jewish people uh, share the, the feast of the Pentecost or the feast of harvest or Sabbath is what they call it. And then uh, if you remember, uh, when the church started, God gave them the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It speaks of life. Moms speaks of life. The Pentecost speaks life to the church. Without the Holy Spirit, the, the church will be just like a mausoleum. Okay, we just go by the rituals and there is no life. And yet God, the early church, you know, go back to the uh, to the book of Acts, you see it is full of life because of the Holy Spirit and it happened on the day of Pentecost. And not only that, uh, today we are celebrating the 75th uh, year, uh, uh, anniversary of the nation of Israel. It was in 1948, May 14, 1948, when they were uh, declared as a nation. And for 2,000 years, they are not a nation. They are just scattered all over the world. And yet, 
God in His in His providence, and even the Jewish people they speak of the regathering. Uh, let, let me go there. The regathering of uh, uh, the Israelites in, in, into that tiny nation there in Israel, a modern miracle, and we can speak we can speak a lot of the good things that happened. Uh, to that nation and it began in May 14, 1948 under their uh, first Prime Minister uh, Ben Guion also the name of their uh, international airport in Tel Aviv so three, and it all speaks about life in fact the the, the, the regarding or the becoming uh, the, uh, the becoming a nation again after 2000 years is a fulfillment of prophecy in the book of Ezekiel about the dry bones Okay, and the dry bones are uh, eventually uh, became alive. It speaks of life. It speaks of uh, uh, God's blessing, and so we are celebrating all of those. And then to just give you a to give you a short uh, history about this Mother's Day, uh, it's been celebrated uh, way back before it was celebrated here in the U.S. in 1908, and it was this lady actually, a John Arvis or Anna Anna Jarvis of West Virginia, her mom is started it. So her mom has a desire for moms, for mothers to be recognized uh, for, for, for their uh, you know, for their sacrifices and for their goodness to their family. But then it was Anna Jarvis, the daughter, who uh, who did a lot of work so that this celebration of Father's Day become a holiday here in the US. So I think it was in 1918 under uh, President uh, Wilson that uh, he proclaimed Mother's Day as a holiday. Actually, it's supposed to be holiday, but uh, and ce celebrated every Sunday, uh, every second um, Sunday of the month of May. So, like I said, it's mothers are are, are individuals who are supposed to be a. Uh, a uh, hero, heroines, okay, uh, there, should be, there should be the greatest individuals uh, in, in, the, in our lives and yet we are not giving, they are not, they are not getting the praise, the recognition and the gratitude that all of them should receive, okay, in fact on the contrary, actually in the, in the U.S., here in the U.S., um, more, more focus and more attention are given to the young people rather than to the seniors, to the mothers, in fact, uh, the sad thing is, here they institutionalize uh, being old. Okay, what's that being old? They just send them to a nursing home until uh, they, they, they die until they're, they're gone. And, and it's so sad, right? That those are the times, those are the times that mothers or grandmothers, they need affection, they need their children and grandchildren to be on their bedside uh, when they are what? When, when they are alone and when they are sick and they are weak and helpless and yet we don't see that. Okay, it's, it's kind of sad, it's, it's kind of sad, but let us have a different uh, response to our mothers. And like I said that, it should be a happy discussion when we talk about mother, but that's not the reality. You know, some of us, we can celebrate Mother's Day with, with joy and happiness because our moms probably passed away. Or sometimes we don't have good relationship with our with our mother and then the mother also to the children and that creates a lot of uh, you know sadness and a lot of uh, negative things and so a lot of people they are not so excited celebrating Mother's Day okay and, but uh, but uh, whether they are dead or alive we should what we should celebrate them they have a gift one of the greatest gift that God has given to mankind our mothers. In fact, one has, one, somebody has said it's not biblical, but it says God is, God is not everywhere. That's why He created mothers. Okay, it's, it's unbiblical, but there is some humor in it, uh, in, 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 in how, how true. No? And then, uh, let me just go to this uh, Proverbs 31st, because this is a tribute by King Lemuel to, to his mom. Okay, and we will just read, I will just read it, and then from there we will see a lot of the good images of a godly wife and a godly mother. So, you know, you know that women, they are special, they are special uh, uh, beings, they are special creatures of God. You know, you know uh, women, they use both of their brains to process things. Men, we only use the left side of our brain. 
That's why we are only good in reasoning. But women, they're very good in grammar, they're good in, uh, in languages, and they're also good in handwriting. It, it's just now that in school, you know, uh, they don't do much of uh, handwriting because they, they do a lot of typing. Can you imagine that, uh, 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 if you will notice that mothers are very good in multitasking, okay? If I'm changing oil, if I'm changing oil of my car, I don't bring my phone because I cannot do two things at one time. I would see that if I'm on the phone and I'm the, the car, uh, you know, uh, doing, uh, doing the change oil, it's going to spill on my face, it's going to spill all over me because I cannot do two things. I have to stop what I'm doing so I can focus on one. But not women, especially mothers. They can carry a baby, they can have a cell phone, and they can still go. All at the same time, so I will take you stand and do it all perfectly. If I want to do that, it's either I want to drop the phone, I forget what we are talking, and those things, but not moms. Yeah. <laughs> you see, and that's how special, special uh, women, special mothers, uh, uh, and how God designed them. And let us read here. Okay. Let, let us begin with verse uh, 10 of uh, Proverbs 31. Now the Bible, the Bible uh, it speaks about wisdom from cover to cover of the Bible. You will see a lot of uh, uh, references to wisdom. And yet one of the greatest things that you will notice is that every time the Bible, or most of the time the Bible speaks about wisdom, it is connected to a mother. The wisdom of a mother. And then things like that. So here, this is now the summation of the entire book of Proverbs. And, uh, and, and the writer uh, has this to say about mom. He says, uh, a truly good, virtuous wife. The, the, the word that was put this was virtuous. It means uh, uh, not only talented, not only strong, not only valiant, but they are great. That's what it means. A truly good wife is the most precious treasure a man can find. If you are a husband, you can say amen to that. Amen. amen. Never mind. <laughs> There's no excitement. Of I said, see, he says, a truly good wife, okay? Unless your wife is not good, but don't look at her now. It's their day today. A truly good wife, he says there, is the most precious treasure a man can find. He says, a more, a more precious than a precious gems. That's what the Bible says. They're precious, okay? In fact, we had James, uh, oh, uh, wow. I used to call my wife precious. <laughs> now she's fountain pie. <laughs> what is the most precious treasure a man can buy? And look at, look at, uh, look at her, verse 11. Her husband depends on her, and she never lets him down. Husband, your wife never lets you down. She is good to him. Only when you, when you have gifts for her, no. He says, the wife is good to him, to her husband, every day of her life. Something that is consistent. And with you know, and look at verse 13. And with her own hand, she got them as clothes. She is like a sailing ship that brings food from across the sea. So, so you, can see, you can see her industry, she is hard working. I like verse 14. She said, she is like a sailing ship or a merchant ship that brings food from across the sea. She is creative. She wants to feed her family different kinds of foods that they like. It's not only oatmeal in the morning. Hello? Can you imagine your wife serving you oatmeal every day? And Splenda? And same milk? Yikes! With black sand? Yikes! <laughs> no! She said, she, she is like, she's like a sailing ship that means she sees to it. That she's very creative, not in only in making clothes, uh, but also in her cooking to make sure that her family is well fed. Okay, is well fed. <laughs> I remember a, a hungry boy. A hungry boy was in the kitchen looking for food, and she cannot find uh, his mom. So she he went upstairs, and then he saw his mom lying on the bed. He says, "Mom, are you all right?" So the mom said, no, I, 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 I'm not feeling well, I, I, I'm not feeling well. And you know what the boy said? I'm hungry, I, I, I'm hungry, I'm looking for food and I didn't find it. That's why I, I went upstairs to see how, how, how you're doing. And the mom said, I, I'm not feeling well. 
And you know what, you know what the boy said? Mom, you know what? I'm a boy now, I'm a strong now, I can carry you to go to the kitchen and sleep on my food. <laughs> Servants uh, as a part of their family. And then verse 16, she knows how to buy land and how to plant a vineyard, and she always works hard. She's very industrious. She's not just buying things for herself, she is not just buying things uh, just for the sake of buying. She's so smart. She wants to invest on something that will benefit the whole family. And that's why she says she knows how to buy land and how to plant a vineyard. You know, it's not an easy thing, it's hard work to plant a vineyard and to maintain a vineyard. And she always works hard. She knows when to buy or sell and she stays busy until late at night. It sounds familiar. Have you seen your mom doing that? She spins her own clothes and her own clothes and she helps the poor and the needy. So when she said she spins her own clothes, back then they don't have joints where you can buy thread and you can buy... You're not saying anything. Okay. Where, where am I now? Uh, verse 19. It says, She spins her own cloth and she makes the poor and the needy. You know, back then they don't have jewels to buy thread and to buy fabric, and from there they cut and they sew uh, and, and make clothes. Back then, uh, that's why it says that she spins her own cloth. That means she starts it from making thread. Okay? And then from that thread, she makes fabric, and then from the fabric, she cuts it and, and then makes some garments. For not only for herself, but for her family. Look at this. Her family has one clothing, and so she doesn't worry when it snows. She's always thinking of what, 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 uh, uh, what will be good, what will be safe uh, for, her, for her family. In verse 22, she does her own sewing, and look at this. And everything she wears is beautiful. Okay? So not expensive. It didn't say that expensive. Not Louis Vuitton or I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it just said everything she wears is beautiful. You know, it's not a sin to wear beautiful clothes. Don't, don't make a don't not not those uh uh I mean what what does it say? It's a decent and nice clothes. You can imagine sometimes a mothers, I mean just say this. And this is uh it may not be true so uh, so true here in the US. But in the Philippines, it is so true. When you see a mom with five, six, or seven kids, okay, they just forget about themselves. They don't put their hair, okay? They don't put any more lipstick. They don't put any more makeup. And, and I'm complaining with Tagalog, no shame. You know, it's just what everything is going to wear. It, no, it's just there, it's just there. And everything she wears is beautiful. So it's not a sin to wear beautiful clothes, ladies. Okay, then it doesn't need to be expensive. And then the next, look at this again. To her husband it says, her husband is a well-known and respected leader in the city. She makes love to sell to the shop owners. Verse first, her husband is a well-known and respected leader in the city. So there is respect. Okay, mother should be respected. You know the three stages of marriage. The first stage of marriage, the husband talks, the wife listens. The second stage, the wife talks, and the husband listens. You know the third stage? They both talk, and the neighbor listens. <laughs> okay. So here, her husband is a well-known and respected leader in the city. You see, if the wife is accepted the trust and respect and confidence, uh, 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 with, him, with him, her husband, and then the husband is also respected outside the home. Okay, and what could be better than that for a husband to be unrespected because my wife respects me and trusts me? Okay, and then she said, She makes good to sell to the shop owner, she is strong and graceful as well as cheerful about the future. 
Her words are sensible, and her advice is thoughtful. It's, it's a, I, I'd like to I'll give you some more verses on, uh, about verse 26, but then when it's verse 27, she takes good care of her family and is never lazy. Now you see, then this is a, it's like an instinct for moms to be hardworking. And I've seen this with my uh, uh, with my mom, with my own ma mother, and, and also with my wife. And then in verse 26, her words are sensible. That means they can just speak out words without any meaning or sometimes words that hurt other people, especially people within your household. You don't tell you don't, you don't tell your children you are good for nothing. Why can't you be like your sister? Why can't you be like your brother? No, you don't compare. No, you, you see, uh, favoritism in the home is not a very good thing. You can see that back in the Old Testament. Okay, uh, the the man of uh, Jacob and Esau. But anyway, verse twenty six. I will. I'm going to go back to this. But let me uh, let me uh, go bring it to Proverbs twenty one nine. Look at this. It's better to stay outside on the roof of your house than to live inside with a nagging wife. The husband cannot say amen to that because no, we're in trouble. Look at, look, at, look at 27 verse 15. The steady dripping of rain and the nagging of a wife are one and the same. Okay? And then in the, the third, foolish children be, uh, bring disgrace to their fathers and nagging wife goes on. Like the drip, drip, drip of the rain. One again. You know, it's so good in Tagalog. Okay? Look at what it says in Tagalog. Okay? I already read the English. I want to read the Tagalog. And it says, Mas mabuti pang tumirang mag-isa sa bubungan ng bahay kaysa sa loob ng bahay ng kasama ay asawang palaaway. Ha? Ha? You see? Palaaway. That's what's lagging. And this is, look at, look at the 27 verse 15. Ang asawang bungalera ay parang tumutulong bubungan sa panahon ng tagulan. I think right now, ang asawang bungalera. Okay, number three. Kawikan, 19. Ang anak na hangal ay nagtutulog ng kapamakan sa kanyang ama. Ito na. Ang bungalerang asawa ay nakakainis tulad ng tulog sa bubungan. See? That's why going back to verse 26, it says, her words are sensible. And, uh, you know, the, this is me, okay, this is me. I did good grades in my academics from first grade until I graduated high school. I did, I did very good in my academics. But on the back of, the, of my uh, report card, the teacher from first grading up to the last grading, she will always put talkative, very talkative, talkative, very talkative, you know. And when I got married, sometimes I talk too fast, and there are many times that I got in trouble not in the things that I'm doing, but in the things that I'm saying, okay? Uh, in the things I'm saying, and there are times that I'm thinking when I say something, and I see the reaction of my wife, how I wish it goes in slow motion, that I can, hold, that I can get back the words that I said and put it back in my mouth. But it's not gonna happen. Whatever you speak out, that's it. That's why it's so it's so it's so important that our words are sensible, especially the the wife. He's talking about the wife. You can hear my notes in Tagalog after the message. <laughs> I was enjoying it when I was talking at the Tagalog version of the story. But let us go to uh, Proverbs 31. Look at this. The, first, the relationship with the husband, and this is 28, her children praise her. Okay? So, like I said, uh, it's sad and it's tragic that uh, we are raising ungrateful children. Okay? So, they are just, ah, I'm not going to say that, but her children praise her, and with great pride, her husband says, there are many good women, but you are the best. When was the last time, husband, you said that to your wife? You are the best. Huh? Amen. Okay, and then look at verse 30. Charm can be deceiving and beauty fades away. So that so the wife that the, the king that we was talking or the mom that, she, that he is talking is not, he did say that she's very beautiful. And then look at this. But a woman 
who honors the Lord deserves to be praised. So everything that comes before verse 30 is because of that. The woman honors the Lord. So if you are sing single, single, and you are looking for a wife, don't talk for them in the store or in the in, 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 in any place. Find them in the church. There's no, it's not a 100% guarantee that you will find a virtuous wife, but then but your, but your uh, chances of finding a good wife is good if you found them in the church. Hello? <laughs> but a woman who honors the Lord deserves to be praised. Show him respect. Okay, he's talking to the, both, to the husband and to the children. Praise her in public for what she has done. So not honor, she already knows. She already knows that I appreciate her. No, you say it in public. Uh, it, uh, in, a, in the midst of your friends, you can say, I'm not going to be like this apart from my wife. And it's the same thing with me. No, I cannot dress up the way that I put on my, my clothes if not for my wife. I remember when I was working, uh, when I was working, it's very consistent. Every, every day she will prepare my lunch. Uh, before, even before I go to work, and she does that the night before. And she does all of those things. And uh, like I said, uh, I'm not very good in being grateful, but then I, I, uh, I give her cards, you know. Sometimes, sometimes we, we, we give them flowers and cards only when, it is, when there is an occasion, but we don't need an occasion to appreciate them, okay? Amen. <laughs> Show them respect. They deserve respect. Mothers, they deserve respect, okay? And then it says, praise her in public for what she has done. Then, then I will go on, I, I will, uh, I will uh, continue and, and you see, you know, you know God, although he reveals himself as a father, but God, if you will read the Bible, he has the emotion of both the mother and the father. And that's why she, he, he can really take care of us and knows us very well because of that. He's not only a father in the sense that he is a male. Uh, is, he is male, but then he has that emotion also of a mother. And if you combine that, it's just, it is a blessing for their offspring, for their children. Now, the motherly characteristic of God, even in the Old Testament, you, you see how God likens himself. The Lord was like an eagle teaching its shell to fly. And said, always ready to swoop down and catch them on its back. So that's the mother eagle. You know the mother eagle? They are, they are, they make for life. Eagles, they make for life. They are not like dogs or pigs, you know, that, uh, that, that, uh, that have different uh, partners, but not eagles. And here you see there is that faithfulness and there is that fidelity. The Lord was like an eagle teaching each child to fly. And that's how mothers do. They take, they, they take care of the children, you know, from, from teaching them how to walk, how to talk. You know, it's my mom who taught me how to read and write. My mom did not even graduate high school. You know, but most of us graduated college, or seven of us. But it was my mom who taught me how to read. Okay, and I'm not gonna make it in grade school. I'm not gonna, I'm not know how to read, it's my mom. I remember I used to write with my left hand. My mom doesn't say, no, using your left is not good, use your right. You know, use your, your right. So every time I hold the pen in the left, he will hit me with that uh, wooden wood and says, use your right. No, you're right. So to me, it's an advantage. Now I can read. I can write both with my left and with my right. I can do it. And then the thing that, that amazes me, when I got here in the U.S., I saw that most of the U.S. presidents, they use their left to write and hand. I, if my mom is still around, I'm going to tell her, I could have been the president of the United States. My <laughs> <laughs> speaking <I'm> writing <laughs> using my left hand. But the, but the understanding on how my, my, my mom, though she is not uh, that much educated as far as uh, education is concerned, but her instinct is to train me so that I will be a better person. Okay? And this, and this is what, and this is how, how it shows you. So when an eagle, when a mother eagle is teaching her, her young eagle to fly, you will just let her fly above her. And then when it gets tired, isn't it she gonna? She's gonna catch it above. And that's why the Bible tells us, you better our own eagle's wings. That's how God treats us. Sometimes she sees us weak and helpless and we cannot go on. She is always there to soothe us and to help us 
and to keep us safe. Remember Matthew, remember this? Look at this, this is not Jesus, look at this. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, your people have killed the prophets and have stoned the messengers who were sent to you. And look at Jesus, the same thing, he's got two emotions. He got two affection, uh, affection of the mother and the father. I have often wanted to gather your people as a hen. A hen is what? It's a mother chicken. It's a female chicken. As a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. Uh, but you wouldn't let me. So you see the feelings of Jesus when he saw Jerusalem who will reject him. He says, I want to gather you. And this is the picture of a hen gathering her chicks under her brood. And that is to protect them, to warn them. And not only that, to protect them from animals that will harm the small chicks. Look at this. Okay. I saw a video of this. And this particular cobra is trying to, to get into the chick. But because of the mom, who, who was, uh, who was uh, defending her, her, her chicks, that cobra did not, did not bother the chick. He just, he just moved away because of the chick. And I've seen that we used to have a, small, a poultry when we were growing up. So I know how, the, how, how, how a mother chicken protects her own. And that's God to us. That's how he protects us. Sometimes what, when he tells us no, it is just his way of telling us that I am protecting you. If I will always give you what you want, then you will be in trouble. Okay? So there are times that God will withhold things that we think that are good to us, but in reality, it will what? It will just harm us. It will just ruin our lives. And so that's the instinct of the mother to protect her own. And then in Isaiah, look at this. Can a woman, a mother, forget her nursing child? and not have compassion on the son of her womb, surely they may forget. In fact, they are, they are both children, even in their womb. Used to be the, used to be the womb used to be the safest place for a human baby, for a, for a baby, and not anymore. Look at this, can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb, you sarili ng anak? Surely they may forget. Yet I will not forget you. Look at this, this is God talking. I will not forget you, Asha. Uh, see, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Our walls are continually before me. God has He inscribed our names. Banji, Pam, Emelka, Elias. And in our names, he says, he, uh, he inscribed it in the sense that way. This is the only part of our body that we can bring so close to our eyes. This. Uh, the palm, the our hands. And yet God said, I inscribe your name in the palm of my hands. I know you by name. I know every detail of your life. I know when you are lonely. I know when you're struggling. I know when you are when you're going through a lot of problems in this life. I know your weaknesses. I know your strength. I know everything about you. I created about you. And not only that, I cared so much for you. So that's what God is saying. In your name, you know, uh, your, your name is inscribed in my hands. So never even think once that God has forgotten you when you're going through problems in life. No. In fact, the C.S. Lewis said, the pain that comes to us is God's megaphone for us to hear Him, that He loves us and He cared for us. Okay? So, and this is a picture of a mother. Can they forget? Yes, they can. Their own. But me, no. I will never forget you. Hallelujah. And then, and then, and then uh, in Tagalog, Sumagot ang Panginoon, makakalimutan ba ng isang ina ang kanyang anak? Hindi ba niya mapagrama na sakitan ang isinilang niyang sanggol? Maaaring makalimutan ang isang ina. Pero ako, hindi ako makakalimutan sa iyo. And that's God's commitment to us. In Isaiah 66 verse 11 to 13, She will nurse and comfort you just like your own mother until you are satisfied. You will fully enjoy her wonderful glory again. God the Father, God is talking. Uh, having an affection as a, like a mother for her children. The Lord has promised, I will plant Jerusalem with the wealth of nations and make the city prosper. Zion will nurse you at her breast, carry you in her arms and hold you in her lap. I will comfort you, God said, that, uh, I will comfort you there like a mother comforting her child. And then the last, uh, I'm, going, I, I'm about to finish. Listen to your father who gave you life. Okay, it's both. 
father and mother. And do not despise your mom when she is old. No, the word despise is, uh, means uh, don't take care or don't uh, uh, consider her as just a piece of pride and then as, uh, as, uh, as it's no good for nothing. No? Always esteem them high and respect them even at their old age. Even though they are having Alzheimer's or dementia, still they are your mom. They are not perfect human beings and yet for us to realize that they have done so much for us. There. And then that's why he says in verse 25, May your father and mother rejoice. That's their consolation. May she who gave birth to you be joyful. Hindi high blood. Ang ibibigay ko sa nanay mo. Hindi kasiyahan. Kung buntis ka yung nanay mo, palagi siya makutunan dahil sa ginagawa mo. I will put that in the English. You don't give your mom heartache and pain. You give them joy by respecting them, honoring them, and being grateful to them for their sacrifices. I remember that she was, this is my mom. Uh, she was, uh, she passed away at the age of 92. In the last 25 years of her life, she is my best friend. We watch football, NFL together every football season. From 1 o'clock in the afternoon until midnight. Hmm. It's strange. My wife will, will come to us and say, Are you not going to turn it off? No, it's just the second game. My, my mom, my mom knows almost every quarterback that, that NFL has better than me. And then not only that, my mom, uh, she likes God, she, she likes, she loves and she likes gangster movies. Like The Godfather, The Untouchables, and all of those bad guys. And yet when we are watching together, we make, we, we make, we make humor. Even though it is a very serious movie. And then there was one time I told my mom, Mom, let's stop watching all of these crime movies. Let's watch Chinese movies. And then my mom said, why? Because even if they curse, we will not understand them. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is my mom, in fact, oh, she, she, she has hypertension, she has high cholesterol, and she got thyroid, and, 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 and so much, and so much. But she has a lot of... Uh, uh, maintenance um, medication that she's taking. And then I know from those maintenance, she, 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 she heard that you cannot eat patty foods, you cannot sweet, uh, so too much uh, sweet foods like ice cream and things like that. You cannot uh, eat foods that are very high in cholesterol. You know, me and my mom, we're going to buy all of those stones that are bawang sa kanya. We're gonna hide it from my wife. We will not put it in the refrigerator. And me and my mom will, we will drive somewhere else to eat balut. <laughs> no, chicken wings. My mom loves chicken wings. She loves uh, crabs, especially no alligator. No, the one that you find on the shell. And we will hide it from my wife. And my mom says, Bibinya will find us as much as he eat, you know. We will not look at the evidence. And, you know, and you know why? Because I, 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 when, I, when she was uh, at the age of 80, I know it's coming that there will be a time that she cannot eat the food that she likes to eat. I'm not killing her when I'm giving her those food, but I'm thinking I'm not going to wait until they're going to puree every food that she likes to eat. I'm going to give her a little of this and a little of that so she can be happy. At least she's going to be happy with what she's eating. And that is how our friendship, you see, you see her smile in the picture? Because her favorite and handsome son is beside her. <laughs> see, and that's my job. I never forget. You know, I had my polio when I was two years old. And back then in the Philippines, we don't have the polio vaccine yet. Okay, when I, I'm on my right leg, when I had my polio. And my mom, I was already six and seven years old. My mom, I remember when, he gonna, when, when she gonna brings me to the orthopedic hospital, she gonna carry me. Six and seven years old, I'm already big. And she gonna carry me because we have to ride at least three rides from our house in Manila to go to the hospital. And she does that for me every time. Okay, and, and, and that, that's how she sacrificed for me. She will even bring me to school, carry my bag, and, uh, and uh, put an umbrella over my head. And it's probably two kilometers walk one way from our house to our school. And she did all those sacrifices for me. We, are, we were so poor when we were growing up. In fact, I told you this so many times. She will make an omelet. We are nine in the family. My mom and my dad and seven of us. 
Six boys in one car. Can you imagine how big my, my, my older brothers eat? My mom will do an omelette only with three eggs. And, and, and the eggs in the Philippines, the chicken eggs in the Philippines are not like the eggs of the chicken here. The American eggs are like, like this. In the Philippines are like that, square size. See, and then for nine of us, my mom will cook three eggs omelette. She will put a lot of tomatoes and a lot of uh, onion so that it will multiply. And then when, it, when she put it on the plate, I will ask her, where's the egg? Oh, you will find it. It's somewhere there. <laughs> so I remember, when, when, I remember my mom when I was reading that this woman that we read in the in, in, in Proverbs, that she go, uh, uh, she go like as a merchant ship to find food, to discover good food for her family. And the same with my mom. Okay, so... And, 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 and she saw, so we visited her last year, Mother's Day, and we gave her uh, new flowers. So, so we're going to do it again. Um, so we, we will never forget. She may be physically gone, but her memory and her legacy. And that's how you know, we, we are what we are, me and my siblings, because of her. My dad is also good, but my mom is extraordinary. She's a gift. From God. And look at this. Who can find a virtuous wife for her word is para babrobis? I found her. Yeah. She found me. We fell in love. We're still in love. years. <laughs> and look at that. Organic vegetables. That's what she gets for us, you know. She, she, plants the, she plants the vegetables in our backyard. She takes care of them. And this morning and last night, and I think last night, she harvested some so we can have fresh vegetables when she goes there. And that's my wife. I call her. Okay, and she found me. And she is a gift. You know, a successful pastor is not because a pastor is so smart and so eloquent, so articulate. A successful pastor because he, she has a godly wife who yeah. takes care of her, who prays for her, who gives him, who gives him time to prepare for church to take care of you, and that's my wife. You don't see her so much standing here in front, but she does a lot behind the scene in my life. And I will finish with this point, dear mom. As I walk through my museum of memories, I owe you and I honor you for your time day and night. I owe you and I honor you for your example, consistent and dependable. I owe you and I honor you for your support, stimulating and challenging. I owe you and I honor you for your humor, sparking and wit. I owe you and I honor you for your counsel, wise and quiet. I owe you and I honor you for your humility, genuine and gracious. I owe you and I honor you for your hospitality, smiling and warm. I owe you and I honor you for your insight, keen and honest. I owe you and I honor you for your flexibility, patient and joyful. I owe you and I honor you for your sacrifices, numerous and too quickly forgotten. I owe you and I honor you for your faith, solid and sure. Okay. Uh, I, will, I will just uh, stop there just for a second. You know St. Augustine, one of the greatest uh, Christian theologians that ever lived? It was his mom who influenced him to be a godly person. You know the mother of John Wesley and, and his brother Charles Wesley, the, the, the founder of the Methodist Church? It was their mom. There were eight of them, I think eight or seven of them in the family. But it was the influence of them of the mom to those two and look at what they have become they become the founder of one of the biggest denomination of the christian faith charles and john wesley you know uh you know the son of billy graham what's his name the samaritan first franklin graham franklin graham though he was born in a godly family he was not so godly prior to his conversion okay but, but his testimony, he said, every night, or midnight, or three in the morning, 
When I come from being drunk, from being with my gang, from being with my friends, every time I go up, I go home, I will pass my mother's room, and I will hear her mentioning my name to God, asking for my salvation, asking for God to save me. And look at when Billy Graham, Graham now, he is the head of where his father, his father Billy Graham has left, and it's all because of the prayer of his mom. You never give up on your children. Okay? You may not be seeing any godly in their attitude, in their defiance, in their uh, rebellion against you. Keep on praying. One of these days, God will arrest them. Okay? And, and, uh, and even Timothy, you can see Timothy, his mom, Louis, his, his, uh, his grandma, uh, Louis, okay, influenced Timothy to be a godly person and Timothy become one of the assistants, one of the one of the uh, co-workers that work side by side with the apostle Paul. I owe you and I honor you for your faith, solid and sure. Okay? And then I owe you and I honor you for your hope, ceaseless and indestructible. Train up a child in the way that they should go. When they old, when they when they grow old, they go to what? They're gonna come back to it. I owe you and I honor you for your love. It's devoted and it's deep. Happy Mother's Day. You deserve the best. You deserve, you deserve the best. And God, like I said, God has given you to mankind because He wants to express Himself to us in the person of our mothers. So God bless you. Come okay, again. Sorry to have that. 